Let's recreate this music by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross from this new video game trailer. You can download all these presets in my new Synthwave preset pack, a link for that's in the video description. To get started, let's initialize a preset. Now let's give it some dynamics. I'm going to give it some attack time. Let's turn sustain down to zero and set decay to 3.8 seconds. Now I want the notes to overlap a little bit. So I'm going to set the release to two seconds. Now let's turn on a filter. I'm going to choose the dirty 12 decibel filter and remove the resonance. Let's lower cutoff to negative 16. And then let's modulate that cutoff with envelope one. Let's uh, let's reduce that cutoff modulation to 60. And let's give it a little bit of key tracking. Let's do 25% just so the higher notes are a little bit brighter. Now I want to set this up one octave. So I'm going to go to the advanced tab, hold shift, drag up to give it 12 semitones. Now I'm going to prevent the very high end from getting too bright, especially when we're playing in the upper register. So I'm going to use a 24 decibel analog filter and I'm going to set the cutoff to 55. But I need to route in filter one to hear anything. Now it's just a little bit darker. So now let's add in some pitch drift. I'm going to put in a little bit of vibrato here. So I'm going to make this a sine wave, hold shift and drag this over to fine pitch of my oscillator. Now that's a bit slow and a bit extreme. So let's set the rate to about 0.3. It's still a bit extreme. So let's reduce the modulation amount to 0.13. Now I want to start in the middle of the pitch. So I'm going to set the phase of the oscillator to 0.25 since this midpoint is the middle of the pitch. And that'll help it sound just a little bit more in tune. So now that I've done that, I want sort of a lo-fi kind of pitch drift that you might get from like an old tape. So I'm going to get that from random, uh, assigning the random LFO to find pitch as well. So I'm going to hold shift and drag random one over here. <laughs> Now that's a bit extreme. I'm going to set it to sync so that it doesn't trigger every time I play a note. But that's still way too extreme, so let's reduce this to 0.3. I'm going to slow this down. I'm going to set the seconds to 1. So now we get this slow pitch drift. Now I'm also going to remap that modulation. And this is getting pretty picky. You really don't need to do this. But I noticed that the Perlin algorithm for random kind of skews towards the middle. It very rarely gets all the way out to the uh, maximum or minimum. So by default, it's going to rarely be full detuned. But when it does, I kind of want it to pop out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just play with this shape a little bit. And then you might just suddenly hear it kind of jump out of tune when it gets to these points. And I'm going to put a little curve on this. So it'll just kind of jump out of tune um, periodically, uh, probably not very frequently because it rarely gets out here. Uh, but I think that's going to sound kind of nice, almost like it found an imperfection in the tape. <laughs> Thank you.
So it never even found its way out there in that example. But if it does find its way out here, it'll jump out a little bit more. So now that I've done that, let's go to the effects. And this is where the sound really comes to life. So I'm gonna add in a chorus, and I kinda of want that 80s vibe, so I'm gonna set it to four voices. I'm gonna set it to seconds just so that the rate doesn't change uh, if my tempo changes. Now I'm gonna give it a little bit more mix. That sounds good to me, let's add in a delay. Now the original sounded like it had ping pong delay because I heard it kinda of going back and forth between the left and right channels. But that's a bit too much, so I'm gonna lower the mix, and then I'm just gonna lower the spread a little bit to cut out the highs and the lows a little bit. That sounds better to me. Now I'm gonna add some reverb in and tie it all together. So when I'm dialing in reverb, I like to set the mix to about at least 50% so I can hear the reverb, even if I'm not gonna set it that high. Now I want it to be a little bit longer and more atmospheric, so I'm going to go with three seconds. It sounds better to me. And I want it to be a little bit more thick, a little bit more present at the beginning. And that's going to be done with uh, lowering the size. Now, most people, when they want a big, thick reverb, they increase the size of the reverb. But I think decreasing the size of the reverb really makes it more present, especially uh, at the beginning of the reverb. So that sounds a lot better to me. I'm also going to add in more chorus, but before I do, I'm going to lower the chorus frequency just a little bit um, to about 12 o'clock here, so it's not too extreme. And I'm just going to raise it to about 8%. And that sounds good to me. Now I'm gonna do something I don't normally do. I'm gonna put distortion after the reverb, uh, and that's gonna help really bring out the detail of the reverb and the delay and the chorus. Uh, and so even if I just bring this in here without much drive, you might hear a little bit of a difference. But I'm gonna turn up the drive to about six. And now you really hear a difference. You're hearing quite a bit of grit, uh, but it's not always going to be that bad because we're also going to control this filter cutoff modulation amount with velocity. Because in the original, I noticed not every note sounded the same. Some were duller, some were brighter, some were louder, some were softer. So let's control that dull and brightness with velocity. And that's how hard I hit the key. So I'm going to drag this over there. And now with lower velocities, you're going to hear less cutoff modulation. <laughs> So you notice that top note was particularly bright because it had a higher velocity. Now we're only kind of working in this narrow window here, but you do hear a difference. Now, lower velocities are gonna be a bit too dull, especially if there's uh, the lowest velocity, it's gonna have zero cutoff modulation. So I want there to at least be some, so I'm just gonna raise the floor here so that zero velocity has 50%, 100% velocity has 100% modulation. Now I also want lower velocities to be quieter. So this is just going to control the amplitude. If I give it about 30% now, lower velocities are going to be quieter. Now that sounds better to me. I'm going to add in an EQ just because I want to cut out a little bit of the lows in case there's some mud down there. I'm going to cut out the very, very high end. And then I'm actually going to amplify at about 100 semitones here. I'm going to set this to about 6 decibels with 26 for the resonance. So here it is without that. So that kind of just makes it sound a little bit more present. You really hear kind of a resonant high end from that boost there. So now let's compare that to the original. In the original, I'm using less distortion in the preset because I'm adding in distortion after the fact. So here's the original. Let's 
Let's hear ours. So, not a lot of difference. I mean, this one's a little bit uh, different in volume, and uh, the volume here might also be different. So, uh, pretty close. So now that we've done that, let's take a look at the re-space. Now this re-space is a lot more simple. Um, basically it's just uh, 16 voices of this saw wave with, and I took out the fundamental here because for some reason it wasn't in the original. I think because they introduce it later to just kind of give it this push. And then 20% detune because it's a very gritty kind of re-space. Let's hear it by itself. Now you're also getting a lot of grit from this white noise. The white noise is actually louder than the, the saw wave. I'm doing a little bit of FM from Oscillator 2 to give it some grit, but really it's so subtle and there's so much noise, it probably makes no difference. Then all of that's going through this low pass filter. And then after that, some chorus. I'm uh, doing a little bump here. Just because I noticed this mid register kind of missing uh, in my recreation and then quite a bit of distortion and then after that distortion you know this distortion is bringing out a lot of that detail and then after the distortion is another low pass filter and i'm modulating that cutoff with this envelope here and when i first heard this i kind of thought there was like a drum or like some kind of percussive sound at the beginning of the reese but i realized once I just added in this filter cutoff, because of this noise, it kind of has this percussive pop to it. Then after that, the same reverb settings as I had for the lead. Now, another interesting sound I want to show you is this high drone. So that's over here. And this is pretty simple too. It's just pink noise. Uh, you could use any pink noise. I just happened to use this one. And then I'm using these bandpass filters. So you can set the blend here for a filter. Then I set the resonance to 90%. I turned key tracking up all the way so that I could uh, set the pitch of the uh, frequency. And then I set the cutoff to 24 for this one and then 36.2 for this one. So they're octaves apart plus 20 cents, which just makes them sound a little bit detuned. Um, sounds like that without this top one. So they're just in octaves there. And then I'm uh, taming the high end by just using this low pass, giving it a band pass to kind of get rid of some of the uh, lows as well. Uh, distorting it to bring out some of the detail putting it through a chorus because this is retro wave and then uh, reverb, same settings as before. Then everything else is just noise. So this rumble is just low pass noise. And then this, uh, I have a wind sample that I just compressed with a spectral compressor so that it's basically like the same frequency response as pink noise. So altogether, it sounds like this. Mm -hmm. 